Okay, so what we've got here is the basic reticulation controller, and we've got it all plugged in and set up. We've got a 24 volt AC power pack, which is what you would normally run your reticulation on. So if you have a retic controller already, that's probably what it's running on, is 24 volt AC. So the idea is you could, if you've got room in your control box, insert this in to the one you've got already, if it fits, um, use the existing power, and you can uh, use this to control the relays, or perhaps you could even um, duplicate it or double it up so that you can use the manual box that you've got and use this as well for Wi-Fi control. So it's sort of um, pretty handy. That's what the idea was behind it. Now I've got it um, connected up to the oscilloscope. Um, we've got two solenoid valves just here. Now bearing in mind that when you've got a reticulation controller, two is usually all you'll run. You'll have the main valve and you'll have a station that's going. So you wouldn't normally have any more than that turned on. So we can turn those on to test out um, to make sure that it all works okay with the two valves running. Now we've got here on the oscilloscope with nothing turned on at the moment is the 36 volts coming out of the rectified AC. So that's coming through these capacitors here and through a bridge rectifier. And so we're just looking to make sure that it doesn't drop down or lose its um, um, voltage if we put too much load on it. And we've got the five volt just here, which is a switch mode power supply. And that is um, capable of going in 50 volts down to four volts. So um, we've got no problem there. The maximum voltage we've got is gonna be about 36 volts. So that's fine, it's perfectly fine. And that's putting out a nice steady five volts. And we were getting um, a peak to peak ripple of about 10 or, 10 or 20 millivolts, which is nothing at all. And then finally, we've got a um, LDO voltage regulator for the ESP module. And that is sitting really steady at 3.3 volts. And we've got peak to peak on that at 20 to 40 millivolts. So everything looks really good. Um, we'll just turn on some of these relays and see what happens. So we turn the first one on, this one here. And we've just lost a little bit of voltage, but that's all perfectly fine. Everything's going okay. And we'll try the next one. And it's still going fine. No problems at all. Everything's holding well. And we'll turn on the last two as well. So we wouldn't normally have all of them turned on, but we'll go for it. So that's all sweet. We've got heaps of capacity there. So we could probably make these capacitors smaller. There's no need to have two. I've got two 1,000 microfarad capacitors there. They're both rated at 50 volts. So we could make them smaller and that would make it a little bit more compact, which would probably make it fit inside the, an existing enclosure a bit better if it, that's just the only height that's sticking up. So that's pretty good that it, it'll work out well. So I'll just turn it off and I'll show you a little bit about this little um, controller here. Okay, so the idea behind this controller is just, it's simple. So most of the time I install reticulation controllers, I do it all the time, and they put in a big, huge, um, complicated box on the wall, and it costs two to three hundred dollars to install them, and it has no Wi-Fi connectivity, and they install two stations, and that's it. So the idea is if you've got just a simple, straightforward system, like my house here, I've got three stations and a main valve, so th th this would be perfect for my place. And I, I would say that this would suit most people's uh, setup. And it has uh, the capacitors here and a bridge rectifier on the bottom. And they uh, take the AC voltage from the retic system and uh, it becomes 36 volts DC. And then in here, we've got a switch mode power supply that's capable of switching 50 volts maximum and that puts out five volts and then the five volts is fed into the LDO just here to power the ESP and that's capable of 300 milliamps and the five volts also runs these uh, relays here and last of all we've got a Darlington array just here to drive these relays so that is this controller and there's one little thing I added here that I thought we could use is a light detector now the idea behind that was that it gets mounted in this box so you could either put it in the existing controller or you can mount it in this box on the wall if you just want to use this. And you can bring the cables up through the cavity or in the bottom and it's all waterproof and out of the way. Now, if you've got the lid on it, it's dark in there. And if we made a little hole and put a plastic cap in it, 
then we can actually use that light detector as a signal to turn on the controller. So if you're outside and for some reason you want to turn on a station, uh, you can just come over and hold your hand over it for 20 seconds and then take it off and the station will start and run. So that's the sort of the idea behind that little feature. I'm not sure how well it will work, but I'm going to try it out and see how it goes. So that's the basic reticulation controller. If you would like to get either the, just the kit with this, the S, uh, SMD components installed, uh, that's available in the description down below. And of course, I'm gonna link all the design files and all the parts required on, in the description down below. If you wanna make it all from scratch yourself, that's fine. And if um, you have any questions about it, um, please feel to leave a please feel free to leave a comment and I'll be I'll try to help out anyone where I can. Now the idea is that this gets used with Home ESP at the moment. So it's super simple just to set it up in Home Assistant with Home ESP and you flat, I'm, I'm using this little module here, an ESP8285, which has got one megabyte of memory built into it. So that can be connected to Home Assistant that way. And I've got a video that I made about app daemon and it's got a basic reticulation controller and I was going to work on that a bit more it does work it does um, do its job but I was going to add some more features to it and the idea is that these two things will work together so a pretty low cost way of um, connecting up your retic system to home assistant thanks for watching the video I hope you enjoyed it um, I appreciate any feedback and comments and um, down below and I'll catch you next time